do you pay for labour when you can have some fun doing it yourself? Oil changes are the single most important task for your engine's longevity. After saying all that, it's really good to see someone else do an oil change on their bike and gain the knowledge and the confidence so that you can do it all by yourself and do it right the first time. To do a successful oil change, the things that you're gonna need is first, a four liter pack of brand new oil. I'm using 15W50, that's good oil to use in a temperate climate like New Zealand, Australia, America, England, Germany. It's just the far north and the far southern parts of the world where you might need to use something different where it's really cold and you're planning to use your bike in winter. But in moderate climates, 15W50 is the way to go and look for the stuff that's got a JSO of MA or MA2 and an API of SJ. Now there are technical specifications that I go into more detail in another video which I'll point to you at the end of this one. When you go to put the new oil you've bought into your bike you need to make sure you've got a funnel that actually has the right size mouth on it that fits into the hole where you refill the oil on the right hand cylinder. And make sure you replace your sump plug crusher washer. You could even actually reuse one that's already been used so when you take it out you can actually put it back in but just make sure if you do that you flip it around the opposite direction and put it in backwards because they're not actually meant to be used twice but you could get away with if you forgot to buy one but I would recommend for the price it's like a few cents buy a few spares and use a new one each time and you also want some protective safety glasses now these are kind of optional but I would say they're a must because if you get some oil in your eye it's not a nice experience and talking of oil being nasty you want to protect the largest organ on your body and that's your skin make sure you've got some latex gloves and they'll protect your skin really nicely of course once you've pulled out your sump plug you're gonna need a container to catch all that old oil and the best thing to get is a nice deep container a container like this here but today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a different container and it's a proper tool pro oil dispensing tank and you just have to um, undo the plug in here and uh, the oil comes down out of your uh, sump comes into here you put that plug back on and then it's nicely contained and then when you take it to the actual metro you can undo the opposite end undo that and pour it into their container for correct disposal to remove your oil filter you'll need one of two things depending on the filter type you've got you're going to need either a 17 millimeter socket like this one here or you'll need a cup and a cup comes like this and it has uh, grooves on the side you'll need to count the grooves on your oil filter to make sure that you've got the right size cup to remove that filter so you've got two options there depending on the type of filter that you've got and naturally if you're using a socket you're going to need a ratchet and of course you need to make sure you've got a brand new filter on hand for example i've got an hf 164 from high flow filtro and that works with the cup rather than the socket but if you decide to buy a K&N filter, then what you'll need is the 17mm socket because that'll help you install it because it's got a nut on the bottom of it. Next up to undo the sump plug to get the oil out of your bike, you're going to need an Allen key or a hex key and you're going to need a number 8. You'll also need some rags to clean up some small spills and clean the sump plug once you've taken off the bike. This plastic bag you'll use to put in the old oil filter just so it's not too messy. Once you've emptied it out of oil, there's always a little bit of a residual oil floating around so putting in a plastic bag is a good idea. It's also a really good idea if you're working out on your driveway or in your garage to have a little bit of cardboard under your bike to protect it from those spills. And lastly I'll show you a pro tip on how to increase the efficiency of your oil filter to better protect your engine. Before you do an oil change the first thing to do is check your engine oil level and this is something you should be doing on regular intervals especially during the run-in period of a new motorbike. For the R9T it's really important that when you're checking the oil level that it's not sitting on the side stand but instead that it's nice and up straight and level with the ground. Now given that the R9T has a single sided swing arm you'll need a paddock stand like this one here. Alternatively you could also use a chock at the front of the bike. After doing maintenance on your bike for a while you might decide to add an additional item to your garage and that's a bike lift. Take a good look at the sight glass and look inside the red circle and see how high the oil is actually within that sight glass. Is it all the way to the top? Is it actually past the top? Or is it part way up? Ideally it should be somewhere between halfway up and below the top of the red circle. But it shouldn't be either that red circle because then it's likely to be either filled. Now the change to oil. But just before we do, if you're learning something new here please click the like button down below and if you're enjoying the video then feel free to subscribe. But now let's get on to actually getting the job done. To assist draining the oil easily out of your sump it's a good idea to run the bike for about 10 minutes just to warm it up a little bit and then once it's run for 10 minutes turn it off and wait for it to cool for 5 minutes. Go around to the right hand side of your bike and locate the oil filler cap. You want to give that oil filler cap a really good clean all the way around it, make sure there's no dirt or anything that can go inside your engine because next you're going to take that filler cap off 
And the reason you take that off is because A, you need to check the seal on the inside of the filler cap to make sure there's no cracks or any damage to that or whether it needs replacing. And also to allow air to enter the engine to vent the crankcase. And this will make it a lot easier to drop the oil out of the bottom of the bike through the sump once you take out the sump plug later on. Do the same job for the oil filter, give it a good clean and also the sump plug. Now of course, when you drop the oil out of your bike, you want to make sure that you've got a good container to catch that oil. And the best way to make sure that it doesn't splash everywhere onto your floor or onto your eyes, is to chuck an old rag inside that container, just bunched up a little bit, so when the oil comes out, it's got something soft to land into. Now grab the number eight hex key, the Allen key, and just crack open that sump plug. We're not going to take it all the way out straight away, but we want to undo it enough so that we can actually undo it the rest of the way with our hands. So just undo it enough with the Allen key so oil starts to kind of drizzle down the thread and leave it at that for now. Now ensure you've placed your container that's going to catch all the oil directly under your sump plug and now undo it with your hands just a little bit at a time ensuring your hands aren't in the way just in case that oil's still a little bit too hot to handle. Once you've removed the drain plug, have a look at it, you'll see a crusher washer on there. That crusher washer needs to be removed because you need to replace crusher washers each time you change the oil. If you've forgotten to buy one, you can actually use them a second time. You just need to flip them around and pop them on backwards, but it's not recommended and the cost of crusher washers are so cheap, you might as well just buy a handful of those when you're in town next. Next we'll remove the oil filter. Now if you've got an OEM oil filter installed, you just need the 12 sided cup oil wrench, or you need a universal wrench, or you can use a jaw wrench. If you've got a K&N filter with the bolt on top of it installed, all you need to get is a 17mm socket and a ratchet, and you should be able to get it off in no time. As you're removing your oil filter, take care because it'll be full of oil and you want to dump that oil into the container. Once you've dumped the oil into the container, give it a bit of a wipe and then put the actual filter into the plastic bag. And that'll ensure that you don't get oil all over your garage floor. One thing to take care of when you're removing your oil filter is to ensure you've actually removed the oil filter seal along with the filter. Sometimes that seal can get stuck on the bottom of the sump where the oil filter connects. So once you've successfully got the oil filter off and you've removed the seal, just make sure you give it a good clean up where the seal connects to the engine so it's nice and clean for the new oil filter ready to be installed. Grab your new oil filter and have a look around the outside of the oil filter because you'll notice there's some marks on it. These marks can be used to help you locate and tighten the oil filter to the correct specification during the installation. But for now, just grab your oil filter and make sure you put some brand new oil on the actual rubber seal. And that'll do three things. It'll make it easier for you to install the actual filter. It'll also increase the longevity of that particular seal. And lastly, and most importantly, it'll ensure you don't get any leaks. Fill the oil filter with fresh new oil. Now, you can actually put an oil filter on dry, but putting oil in it, like priming the oil filter, will actually ensure that on the first start of your bike, when you've replaced all the oil, it isn't actually gonna be running dry. There's a wee pro tip you can do to help optimize the way that your filter actually filters the oil and ensures it grabs all the metal particles, even the smallest microns of metal particles going through your engine. When you install your oil filter, it's a really good idea to install a magnetic washer. Now these magnetic washers will help collect the little bits of ferrous metals that may be coming off inside your engine before they get recirculated with the oil through the engine multiple times, causing more and more and more damage. So you don't want that. I mean, you don't want ferrous metals coming out in your oil filter to start with, but if they are, you want to make sure you keep them in the filter. So with the magnetic washer in place, screw the filter on by hand until you feel that it's made firm contact. Don't over tighten it because like all seals, over tightening will create leaks. If you do have a cane filter and it has a little nut on it, you might be tempted to tighten it using a ratchet and a socket. Now actually that nut is actually only there for actually putting the filter on. After saying that, yes, if you're new to putting on oil filters and you're not sure how tight to do it with your hand, you could use a socket and a wrench, but I'd prefer to use a torque wrench so that you can actually identify how much torque you're putting on that filter. Normally it's around about 8 to 12 newton meters. Next, grab your drain plug and clean the threads with a clean cloth. Or better still, use a little bit of brake cleaner. Now that you have a nice clean drain plug, take your crush washer and insert it onto the drain plug and then screw it by hand into the sump. Now do it by hand because if you go and use your Allen key, you might tighten it while the threads are actually cross threaded. And that would be something that you definitely want to avoid. And once you've got it all the way into the sump by hand, then you can grab your torque wrench because you know it's not cross threaded and you can torque it to 32 newton meters. Make sure when you're torquing, you only torque it one or maximum two clicks. 
to be honest, eventually you get used to what that feels like and how much 32 newton meters is, and you won't even need to use a torque wrench. Next, empty about 80% of the container of new oil that you've bought into your engine just a little bit at a time through the oil filler mouth. As you slowly add the oil into the engine, keep checking the side class and wait until you get it to about halfway. You shouldn't need any more than 3.95 litres of oil. Whatever you do, don't fill it up past the top of the red circle in the side class. And if you do, you're going to have to take some oil out. The middle ground is the smack in the middle of that red circle. That's the Goldilocks spot you're aiming for. If you do accidentally overfill the engine, don't panic. The easy solution is to undo the sump plug and let a bit of that oil out until it reaches the halfway mark again in the sight glass. And then simply screw the sump plug back in again. Next you can reinstall the oil filler cap and go and take your bike for a ride for 5-10 minutes so it can reach operating temperature. This will heat up all the oil in the bike, you can bring it back home, park it up in the garage, turn off the bike and let it sit for about 10-15 minutes so that all the oil can run from the top of the engine down to the sump and it'll give you a really accurate reading in that sight glass and you'll see the oil's just slightly above halfway which is just perfect. Once you're happy with the oil level in the sight glass, next you need to check that there's no leaks under the oil filter or around the sump plug and also around the oil filler cap. There you go, you've successfully changed the oil in your engine. You've got a whole lot of new oil lubricating and protecting and cleaning all of those really expensive parts that make up your pride and joy. Hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please click the like button down below and if you'd like to see more on the BMW R9T then feel free free to subscribe but if you want to learn more about the oil that you should be putting into your bike then you won't want to miss out on this video right here